Bienvenidos, Husham Deed, and welcome to another Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at lab 3.1.2.3, where we're going to investigate the essentials of a while loop. So let's dive into the material here and let's see what we've got. Estimated time of 15 minutes. We'll try to make it a little shorter than that. Level of difficulty is easy. We've got our objectives. And let's jump right into the scenario here. So we've got a junior magician. He's picked a secret number. As you can see, the code provided here on the right, that secret number is 777. Now, these are the requirements. We're going to be completing the magician's code because if I were to run the code right now, what we would end up seeing down here in the bottom is simply that print statement executing. So we want to prompt the user to enter an integer number. We're going to use a while loop and we're going to stay inside that loop until the secret number has been guessed. So we've got some requirements here as to what the code is going to say. Let's go ahead and tackle each of these in turn. So we're going to ask the user to enter an integer number. So let's come out to the integrated development learning environment or idle. And I'm just going to simply go ahead and put in here the prompt for the user to enter something in. But we're going to do this inside of a while loop. And so there's a number of ways you could tackle this. This is how I'm going to tackle it. And I'm actually going to leave a mistake in here at the very beginning. So we're going to simply say while answer is not equal to 777. So in other words, until the answer is equal to 777, we're going to do the following things. So I'm going to use this variable answer that I've specified, I'm not going to say created, that I specified right here in the while statement. Now, the mistake, as we're going to see here shortly, is that I haven't instantiated, right, or defined, created that variable yet. But we'll get there in just one second. So uh, we're going to say answer, and we want to use an integer. So again, this is that explicit type conversion, or what we call type casting, because the input function by default is going to return a string. So I'll say, please enter a number. So we're going to have the user enter a number. I'm going to convert that default data type that would be returned from the input function, which is a string, and I'm going to type cast it, change it to an integer because we're going to be doing some comparison. So inside the while loop, until answer is equal to 777, we're going to do the following. We're going to prompt the user to enter a number. And of course, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check. I'm going to see, is answer equal to the secret under, sorry, e secret underscore number? So that's our first check. In other words, this would mean that the user has guessed the correct number. In other words, 777. Now, let me take a quick look back here because it wants us to print something specific. All right, so if there is a match, <clears throat> excuse me, if there was a match, we need to print out uh, that they have gotten the right number, but then we also want to print the number out. All right, so that number would be captured, right? If answer is 777, then answer, the variable, is going to contain the value that we're looking for. So we could tackle this in a number of ways. So I'm going to print out, first of all, uh, let's go ahead and say, well done, comma, or actually, we don't want to do the well done muggle first. Let's go ahead and say, um, you guessed. And uh, they're going to guess, let's do this. We'll end that there and I'll keep it nice and close to here. And we'll say answer, um, you guessed 777 and you were correct. Let's say that. All right, everything should look good in there. And so we're going, and that's going to print out you guessed and whatever the answer is, it would have to be 777 to get to this portion of the code. And it's going to say, and you were correct. And then they have a 
message over here, well done muggle, you are free now. So then let's go ahead and print that out. Uh, in addition, we'll say, well done muggle, you are free now. All right, so everything looks good there. I'm just making sure we've got everything correct in terms of syntax. So everything looks good so far. Now, that is if the value that they entered is 777. But what if the value is not 777? Well, that's where we have this if, and now I could do an L if, if I was trying to check for multiple type things, but if it's not the right answer, we immediately know that we basically want to go here and I think they want to print, ha ha, you're stuck in my loop. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Ha ha. Uh, and they want us, uh, so let's do a backslash, because I like the single ticks, single quotes for <clears throat> identifying my strings. So you're stuck in my loop. All right, so what is this code doing? Well, if we take a look here and let me draw, get the drawing tool out. So as long as the answer, right, whatever they type in to the prompt, please enter our number, is not equal to 777, we're just gonna sit here and do this again and again and again. They're gonna get prompted and every time they put the wrong answer in, it's gonna print, ha ha, you're stuck in my loop. But if, for whatever reason, the user gets lucky enough and they get the correct value for the secret number and we capture that, well, we capture it here, whoops, sorry, but then the check to see is it equal, equivalent to the secret number, if this is true, then we print out, you guessed uh, the answer was correct and well done. Now. We're still missing one important thing, but I wanna show you what happens here. So you'll notice that we didn't define answer anywhere, right? A-N-S-W-E-R, we didn't define this yet. So let's go ahead and do F5. Let me scoot that out of the way. Let's hit F5. Let's save our code. And we're gonna end up with an error message over here, right? We get a trace back and it's come up and it's a name error. Answer is not defined. So just like secret number has been defined, we need to define answer, right? And so I'm gonna put the answer here. And again, as long as I don't put it equal to 777, we're gonna get into the while loop, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So while the answer is not 777, and initially when it runs, right, it's gonna be zero. And we got to get in here to get that input. So again, let's go ahead and run this. Let's save our code. So enter a number. All right, well, let's come on over here and let's play for a little bit. We'll say 111, you're stuck in my loop. 222, stuck in my loop. 333, three, three, stuck in my loop. What about 777? You guessed 777 and you were correct. Well done, Muggle, you are free now. And so again, there are probably multiple ways that you could approach this. But this is the, uh, when I looked at the, uh, the description for the program, this was based off of everything we've learned to this point in the course. This was probably the easiest way uh, and the most straightforward way is simply declare the answer to be equal to zero. And then while the answer is not what we're looking for, go ahead and cycle through here and continue to prompt the user for uh, a number to try to match that secret number. All right, well, that is going to do it for activity 3.1.2.3, where we took a look at the while loop. And again, remember, we're stuck in there until some condition is met. And in this case, we're going to be in there until the number, the secret number, or I should say the answer, was equal to 777. All right, well, that wraps up this activity. Thank you so much for watching. Best of luck to you out there, and I hope to see you in the next video.